Sam Bankman Freed likely to plead not guilty to fraud charges. Uh, U.S. prosecutors had charged the FTX founder with engaging in criminal conduct that contributed to the cryptocurrency uh, exchanges collapse. And uh, my thoughts on this one is good luck, Sam. <laughs> I mean, both Gary Wong and Carolyn Ellison uh, basically uh, did a plea uh, deal. Uh, they pleaded guilty and you're going with, um, you know, not guilty. Well, you know, good luck. Um, this is just a rumor so far. And this, like I said, the headline is likely. Uh, we'll get a probably official announcement, I, I believe, in the next day or so. And uh, I'll report that when we get that. Um, one of the things that's also going on as well, I'm sure you guys know, there's a big fight to get the money that FTX does have. So it's not like they don't have any money. They have some. Um, how much they have is anyone's guess. Um, one thing that's is going on is uh, the Bahamas. I was seeing this over the holiday. Um, I guess they seized like $3.5 in assets. So this could be crypto. This could be cash. You also have physical assets like real estate that could be sold. Uh, essentially, you have all these people in line. Uh, trying to get their money back and people are essentially trying to skip the line. So we'll see what happens with that. And, um, you know, I'm trying to catch up on the holiday uh, sort of news that was happening. I'm sure you guys are joining the holiday and again, happy new year. And um, we'll get back into the swing of things. And um, one of the things I've noticed, it's, it's really interesting, is uh, so many uh, sort of money slash uh, finance channels are all making videos about Tesla, of, like how Tesla has been poor performer, these kind of things. And yet all those said people were all pumping Tesla for the next couple of years. Um, and it's the same with FTX. I, I warned people about FTX. I warned people about Tesla. It turns out I was right. Most channels out there were wrong, but it is what it is. And, and essentially what it is, is that people just believe whatever they want to believe. And unfortunately, when the party is going and the hype is there, uh, it just seems like it, things are going to go up forever. But unfortunately, um, that's just not how uh, markets work or the economies work it goes in cycles uh, things just don't go up forever now interest rates are going up and essentially what's going to be happening is a lot of people are going to be losing their jobs and if you're losing your job do you want to go out and buy an expensive tesla and not, not only that do you want to buy expensive tesla and have to pay higher interest on your car loan right that's going to sort of soften demand um the one thing that we're going to be tracking uh throughout this year is what's happening with the uh, labor market right so you can read the headlines here it says uh, job and wage growth showed signs of cooling um, it, this chart is actually really good to see because you can see how, um, you know, basically we can say uh, um, the, there was a big dip uh, in payrolls, right, during the pandemic uh, that people started hiring again. Uh, the issue is, though, is that some uh, industries overhired. So, for example, would be uh, the banks, right? So you're seeing a lot of headlines been recently, like a lot of banks are firing. You're seeing a lot of tech uh, is firing. They overhired as well. And um, there is hiring in the uh, market. However, it may not necessarily be in the industry that you want. Um, I was looking at this thing here and, and they were basically saying that like, you know, um, people still need to be hiring and say like, for example, transportation, say airlines, uh, restaurants, hotels, these kind of things. Um, as, as you guys probably know, we saw that Southwest meltdown over the last couple of days. They just don't have enough people. And plus they have, I guess, old computer systems, these kind of things. But um, there's gonna be some industries that are hiring and some that are not. However, overall, uh, unemployment will likely go up. So the prediction um, that uh, the Fed has been saying is that by the end of next year, uh, it'll be 4.6% unemployment. Um, we are currently sitting at 3.7%. Uh, I will say, however, uh, some of the uh, uh, predictions by economists are saying more like 5.5% unemployment. Now, the reason why these numbers matter is that, again, we're at 37 right now. And um, the, the Fed, they always try to give you the rosiest scenario possible, right? So they're saying, hey guys, you know, 4.6, but chances are it'll be worse than that. And if you take a look at the chart that I just showed you guys um, before, you know, back in the um, 08, 09 crisis, uh, you know, unemployment hit like, you know, nearly double digit, right? You can see it right there on the chart. So, you know, if their uh, economists are predicting to say 5.5%, I mean, it could certainly go higher. It just depends how bad things are gonna get. Um, and then one of the things that I was looking at as, as well in terms of how bad things are going to get, um, the IMF, uh, they were saying a recession will hit uh, a third of the world this year. Uh, and particularly, they were saying that um, they expect Europe to be hit hard. So uh, we'll see if, if that turned out to be true. But it wouldn't be shocking considering that, you know, you have the war in Ukraine is still going on. Um, and, and it is what it is. And, you know, I mentioned before, right, it depends what industries you're in and stuff like that. And it's interesting because um, talking about the USA, we're talking about recession in USA and jobs and stuff like that. Um, there was an interesting article here that was basically saying that um, you know they're going to be uh, continually building EV factories, electric vehicle factories in the USA. So um, it's going to be in some parts of the country. So this is saying that it's like the South. I think it's like a North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky. 
Um, if you're in a state where they're building a new factory to build electric vehicles, uh, let me know. I think it's, I, you know, love to hear the, the news. Um, one thing though, that, that this is a contrast though, to say something like a Tesla is, you know, Tesla is struggling, right? Um, but would other car companies do okay? There is a possibility because um, if they come in cheaper, like for example, say uh, the Toyota Prius, which we've talked about on this channel, um, I think they're gonna be essentially half the price of a Tesla. And if from the eyes of the consumer, if they say, hey, I, I can you know, pay half the price and I can get the, you know, the equivalent fuel efficiency uh, slash cost, uh, you know, it's probably worth it. Um, the other thing too, is, as well, is like there, there's also investment been going on in the chip industry um, we've talked about this before in the channel as well. I'm totally fine with the U.S. Uh, investing in chips. And in fact, um, there was uh, three companies that were mentioned here. One was um, Intel is building in Ohio, which we've talked about. So that's a $20 billion uh, for two new factories. And you got Micron building in Syracuse, New York. Uh, they're saying 20 billion. It's like yeah, 20 billion here, 20 billion there. And then you got Taiwan Semiconductor was saying like, hey, we're, we're spending 40 billion in Phoenix. So um, even though unemployment's going up, there is some jobs out there, right? It just depends what industry you're in and also which region of the country. So it's not necessarily uh, everywhere. And this one thing I mentioned to you guys before on this channel is sometimes um, for opportunity, you have to be willing to move to a city where there are jobs and also have to be willing to go into an industry where there are jobs. So that's something that I, I want you guys to be thinking in your mind of like, how can you be flexible to be successful in, in, in this world? Um, the other news, which uh, probably won't be talked about a ton, but is extremely important, is what the heck is the Bank of Japan uh, doing over there? Um, I saw this headline. This is just uh, recently. They're saying Bank of Japan makes unscheduled bond purchases for third straight day. Uh, and when you see these sort of words of like unscheduled, it's a bit odd. And then you see these other headlines that were coming out. You know, this was just a few weeks ago. Bank of Japan shocks investors. <laughs> like you don't you don't usually want to see these kind of things from a central bank. And uh, basically is. Um, we're concerned about, okay, inflation and uh, recession in Europe, right? And then maybe money will start shifting from different places around the world to where um, they think their, their money is going to be safe. And, you know, who knows, maybe uh, Japan will be si to successful in, in essentially defending their currency, making the yen attractive, making the uh, Japanese bonds more attractive. You know, we'll, we'll see on that. Um, but uh, just mentioning that because I, I think we're going to see more about Japan. You'll probably see more about China as well. I, I want you guys, when, you, when we talk about markets, to be thinking about like multiple countries that are, are in play, not just one or two, because I know uh, there are many shows out there that only talk about the USA, but I, I want you to understand that we are part of a global economy uh, and it certainly matters. So, um, you know, for for example, um, when we when we talk all the time on the channel, uh, what is going on with the COVID situation in China affects all of us. Um, you know, we're concerned about whether or not there's going to be a variant. You guys know that they've um, come out of lockdown. So uh, we're, we're seeing, unfortunately, a death toll going up. Uh, we're also worried about a variant here, uh, or say you're there. I'm in Korea, but you know, in the USA. Um, so this is the headlines. Highly immune evasive Omicron XBB.1.5 uh, variant is quickly becoming dominant in the USA as it doubles weekly. And I was like, what the heck? So um, my advice is, is always the same with, with, with this kind of stuff. So one, be it jobs, have job skills uh, that companies need, right? And the companies are willing to pay for. And then also too, when you come into the virus, Protect yourself, right? If you're sick, don't be like spreading it with other people. And if other people are sick, avoid said people. So <laughs> always the same advice. Uh, you know, for some time, for some reason, when you talk about COVID, some people just lose their minds and they just say, just treat COVID like the flu or the cold. Uh, you take care of yourself, right? Get some rest, that kind of stuff, and then try to avoid contact with sick people or spreading it. I think that's a pretty uh, sound advice for any of this kind of stuff. And, um, you know, overall, uh, I think we're probably going to make it through 2023. Uh, as long as that you're sort of expecting these challenges coming, be it from the COVID, be it from inflation, be it from unemployment, this kind of stuff, and always position yourself to be successful. So, um, you know, advices would be like, reach out to your network, see how your friends are doing, how are, they, how are their industries doing, how are their job prospects. Uh, also too, you know, look at your own sort of resume, uh, look at your own LinkedIn, this kind of stuff, update these kind of things, and just always be prepared uh, for the unfortunately inevitable slowdown in the economy. So um, I do expect 2023 to, to be uh, more of the same in terms of like, you know, markets probably going to be either flat or go down. I don't think it's going to be any crazy rallies or anything like that. And, um, you know, the main issue is, is just that it, it takes a long time when uh, inflation, you know, gets to be where it is, where prices are so high and, and then companies have to pay, you know, workers more money to come to work because workers are like, hey, you know, rent's too much and food's too much. Pay me more. Or I'm not working for you. And um, it just creates an endless cycle of, of high prices, right? High inflation. So it's tough to control. And until that goes down to the Fed's 
two uh, percent target, right? Two percent inflation target. Um, we're probably going to see a lot of pain in the market and stuff like that. And so this is sort of why I emphasize the same sort of themes over and over again. Uh, and it doesn't hurt to repeat, right? Uh, have job skills that uh, companies are willing to, um, you know, pay for, and also to um, be realistic about, you know, your expectations. I think what what got a lot of people this past year was just unrealistic expectations and too much hopium. So uh, try to do my best to keep you guys informed and uh, let's get back uh, to the grind, I guess, of 2023. Uh, now that we're in the new year and uh, I do appreciate you guys joining us every day and this has been your daily news.